Okay, can you guys hear me now? All right, great. All right, thanks. Thanks for your patience. Sorry about that. Uh, again, there's no explanation whatsoever. That's just how uh, computers are for some reason. So technology in general. All right, so you're all experienced practitioners, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of extra time explaining stuff uh, unless I'm reminding you of something. So I might say things that you've heard me say before, but those are things that I feel anyway, people either forget or they might think they understand and I feel they don't really quite get it. So let's just start by sitting tall, close our eyes and we'll bring our attention inward. Everything we do today is ultimately about becoming aware of, and you could say, uh, releasing tension inside of the body mind. So yoga has really nothing to do with what's going on outside. Now it's not to say once we shift our inner landscape that that does not reflect outwardly. Absolutely it does. But yoga teaches us that really we have to shift inwardly in order for the outward expression to be right. Okay, so our attention needs to be inward, even though we're doing postures, even though we're doing all this outward stuff with our body, we need to notice how that feels inside. So starting out, we wanna begin there. We just want to become aware of, okay, how am I feeling right now? Do I feel good? Do I feel bad? Was I frustrated that there was no sound right away? We couldn't start. And all of those things will reflect in our breath. So definitely becoming aware of your breathing. And then as usual, we'll begin to deepen our breath. So inhaling belly, ribs, and chest, and exhale, chest, ribs, belly. Make sure you're breathing through the nose. Make sure you're making the ujjayi sound, the ocean sound, the back of your throat and make sure the inhale and exhale are the same length, the same depth. Then with the next exhale, we'll come forward into tabletop. We'll begin cat-cow, warming up the spine. Inhale, tailbone lifts, belly drops, crown of the head up. Exhale, tailbone tucks, back rounds, crown of the head down. Then coming back to neutral, we tuck those toes, lift the hips, come up and back into a down dog, just pedaling back and forth. And then we'll come into our full expression of that asana or posture and take a few conscious breaths there. With our exhale, let's walk our feet toward our hands, coming into ragdoll for a few moments and adding a little bit of gentle movement here. Remember that movement can help reveal what's going on inside of the body. Places where there's pain or tension, tightness, restrictions. So it's not that movement is bad or stillness is bad or good. We just want to use the right tool for the right job. So moving now is a good idea. Moving in Shavasana, not a good idea. All right, as we inhale, we'll roll up to standing. Again, let's take a moment just to notice the face, jaw, and shoulders. If we're holding any excess tension there. And then going a little deeper inward, notice the heart and mind. 
Notice if you have an agenda for today's class or if you're coming with certain expectations of how you think the class should be or what you want the class to be. And I'll say this for your sake, not for my sake, you'll get more from the class without those expectations. So if you can just let go of all expectation and just practice doing the best that you can, but without any expectation, without um, anticipation of what you think is going to happen. Okay, with our feet touching, we'll inhale, draw the arms up. We'll take our standing back bend. So lengthening from the pubic bone through the chin as much as we can. Breathing here and feeling here. We'll inhale through center and exhale into our forward fold. So bending the knees, placing the belly on the thighs, and then straightening the legs while keeping the belly on the thighs, feeling that stretch. With the next inhale, we come to our fingertips, or we can take hands to shins as we lengthen the spine. And as we exhale, we plant the hands and step to the top of a push-up. As always, shoulders are engaged, not relaxed, so that's what it looks like. Hips are level with the heels and the shoulders, not above and not hanging down below. Okay, so it's called a plank pose, so we're supposed to be straight like a plank of wood. Strap our knees for the first push-up, take a deep breath, exhale, chaturanga arms, so the elbows are in at our sides. The elbow forms a right angle or 90 degree angle. And then we exhale the rest of the way down. Pressing the tops of the feet and the hands into the ground, we lift up head, neck, and chest. Exhale, lower down from cobra, press back to tabletop, and then tucking toes back to the down dog. Let's take a breath or two here. we inhale, we come to the toes, filling the lungs there, looking forward, and we exhale to the front edge of the mat. Inhaling up again to standing back bend, we will grab the right wrist with the left hand, and we exhale into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon, stretching our right waist and ribs, breathing into that space. Let's inhale back to center. We switch wrists and take it over to the other side. Try and make sure the shoulders are stacked and the hips are facing forward. So the classic cue is imagine you're between two panes of glass. Good, let's inhale back to center and exhale to forward fold. We inhale to half lift and exhale to the top of a push-up. So knees up or down is your choice, but we want to maintain the integrity in the arms as always. So take a deep breath and then exhale halfway down. Inhale for upward dog, or you can repeat cobra for the back bend here. And then exhale, either use tabletop or come straight back to down dog, but eventually making your way back to down dog. Inhale to our toes, fill the lungs there, and we'll exhale, step, jump, or float to the front edge of the mat. We inhale up to standing back bend, and then we exhale into half moon. Inhale to center, and exhale to half moon on the other side. Inhale back to center, and exhale to chair pose, Utkatasana. Good, so finding that work in the legs and letting the mouth and shoulders and your heart and your mind relax. No amount of thinking is going to make this any easier, but not thinking will make it easier. So mental resistance, emotional resistance, actually will make it more difficult. So learn to relax. Let's take a deep breath, and as we exhale, we release into our forward fold. Inhaling to the half lift, 
And if you can, you exhale right to the bottom of a push-up, inhaling to the upward dog. Or again, you could do cobra. And if you're able to exhale to push-up on your way out to down dog. Now, as usual, you're going to start seeing me skip vinyasas, and that's because if I do all of them, I will definitely get winded and will not be able to teach the class. But I encourage you to do all the vinyasas. All right, let's bring our feet to touch. We'll inhale the right leg up and back. And then we'll bend that knee and make some hip circles in the air. Do a few in one direction and a few in the other direction. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, place that foot between the hands to a lunge. I'm going to turn for the sake of the camera. Ground the back heel and inhale up to your first warrior two, bit of Bhadrasana. Okay, so as usual, we're reaching the fingertips like we're trying to touch both walls. The gaze is over the front fingertips. The front foot and knee point straight ahead and the knee lunges over the heel. The back leg is straight and that foot is firmly planted on the ground. Now I should feel my legs working. If not, I go a little deeper, sink in a little more. This thigh approaches parallel with the ground. So it may not go there, but it's getting closer and closer to parallel, okay? Okay, from there we take a nice deep breath and we exhale cartwheel down to the bottom of our push-up. Making your way back to downward dog via a vinyasa. Okay, let's bring our feet to touch. We're gonna inhale the left leg up and back. We bend the knee and we make some nice Big, wide circles in the air, doing a few in each direction, feeling how the hip feels. And then we exhale and lunge and inhale up to a Vidabhadrasana two on the other side. So again, in my teaching, the most important thing is how it feels. So we wanna feel that front thigh working, that back leg stretching, okay? and the arms getting fatigued or tired. Gaze is over the front fingertips, okay? Taking a few breaths there. Just gonna check on Uta. Looks like she might be having some problems there. Hopefully you can all still hear me okay. Let's take a nice deep breath here. We exhale and cartwheel down, bottom of the push-up, making your way back to the downward facing dog. Okay, from downward dog, let's exhale down into tabletop and we'll come over to the left side. Feel free to turn so that you are facing your screen uh, or however you need to turn, okay? But we're on our left side here. So for side planks, I want my elbow or wrist, depending on which one I'm doing, but right now we're doing the elbow, under the shoulder. Now the shoulders, hips, knees, and heels are all stacked. If you ever feel unbalanced, like you're wobbling, then you can take the top foot in front, okay? Now, there's one way to make this variation a little easier. This is kind of a basic variation of the pose, is to bend the knees, okay? So I take my hand to my hip and I lift up and I try and raise this arm and look up toward the sky. So this is kind of the most basic version of the side plank. And again, this is engaged. You are not collapsing into that joint, having the weight of your body on your shoulder joint. That is a very bad idea. The muscles, however, if they're engaged, they can handle it and they will get stronger as a result. For a little more vigor, you do it with your legs straight, okay? Otherwise, it's the same. Let's come to the other side. All right, so same thing, side plank, I check. Elbow is below the shoulder, shoulder is engaged. Then I lift up. Okay, now notice my body. I'm not doing this, okay? That a lot of people lift up as much as they can. I know it might sound strange, but it gets easier as you do this. This isn't the pose, this is the pose. Plank, again, it's not side arch, it's side plank, okay? so the. It's like if I had a straight line, it goes right through the center of my body. That's what I would like. Now you've all heard me say before, 
it may not be perfect and that's fine. A, we want to be aware of where it's not perfect. And then B, we just work toward that. Even if we never get there, it's not important that we ever get there. We're just working toward it. That's what's important. We know, got our eye on the prize and we work toward it. Okay, so you can go straight back to down dog or vinyasa back. And then from down dog, we'll inhale to the toes and exhale our way to the front edge of the mat. Then we inhale all the way up to standing and we exhale our hands to the heart. Let's take a look at tree pose today and variations from that position. So we'll take the foot and you can either place it onto your ankle like so. You can place it to the inside of the calf or you can place it to the inside of the thigh. So let's just start with a very basic tree pose and we'll work our way up to more complex and difficult variations. Okay, so standing here, you can bring your arms up and grow some branches and leaves if you want for your tree. And exhale, we release tree pose. Side two, same thing. Okay, so we are doing whichever variation makes sense for our body. And if you're wobbly, good. That's how your body learns, by being wobbly, by maybe even falling over. Keep your breath and your eyes steady. That will help with the steadiness of your pose. Good, exhale, let's release the tree pose and inhale, standing back bend. Exhale, forward fold, inhale, half lift, or maybe you do crow pose this time, and exhale, bottom of the push up, making your way back to downward facing dog. Okay. In downward dog, let's bring our feet to touch. We're going to inhale the right leg up and back for three-legged dog pose. Let's have the toes, knee, and the hip pointing straight down toward the ground. Keep the right hip level with the left hip, but keep the right leg straight and lifted. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, lunge. And then again, inhale up into a warrior two. Again, I'm turning just for the camera. Okay. Okay, from our warrior two, we will exhale, sink into it. And then on the next inhale, we come into this position, which is called temple or stupa. So this is just basically a neutral position. You're not gonna feel much here, or at least you shouldn't. And then as we exhale, we come down into goddess pose. Let's drop our hands to our knees for this first goddess. And we will work the legs back and forth and move our torso around a little bit and stretch the groin, which is the inside of the thighs, and that's what we are targeting with this posture today. Okay, now let's inhale, we come on up, and exhale, we sink into our goddess. Good, again, inhale up, and exhale, sinking in a little bit more. Good, inhale up, and exhale, knees and toes point in the same direction. Let's inhale the right heel up as we sink the hips down. We'll keep that face and jaw relaxed, shoulders relaxed, heart and mind open. Good, exhale the heel down, inhale up and exhale, sink into it. Inhale the left heel comes up, exhale those hips sink down. Again, tensing your face or cursing me will not help you do the pose at all. So we want to do the pose as best as we can, but we want to stay relaxed. Good, exhale that heel, inhale up, deep breath, and exhale, sink in both hips. Inhale, both heels come up. Good, so relaxing, remembering to breathe. That's a very important thing in life, just in general. Just remember to breathe. The slower and the deeper your breath, the better. Good, so inhale back up and we exhale, cartwheel down 
to the bottom of our push-up, making our way back to the downward dog. In downward dog, we'll bring feet to touch. We're gonna to inhale that left leg up and back to three-legged dog pose. From there, we take a nice deep breath, exhale as we lunge, and we inhale up to warrior two. Exhale as we sink into it, and then inhale up again to stupa, and we exhale to goddess. Let's again see if we can get a little bit, maybe even deeper into the hips now. You can always repeat. Your body tends to appreciate and benefit from repetition. Your mind might get bored very quickly with repetition, but the body does not. That is primarily how the body learns. Okay, so inhale back up, and we exhale, goddess pose. Again, inhale and find your edge each time you sink into it. And one more time. So now that we're doing this, you know, you might have to go quite a bit deeper. Good, let's inhale that left heel up. I'm sorry, I'm not mirroring you in this posture. I maybe should have. All right, so we're sinking down into it and we're remembering to breathe. Again, probably the most important thing and to breathe through the nose slow, deep, and relaxed. Good, exhale that heel, inhale up, and exhale opposite, coming down, and then we inhale the opposite heel, sinking into it. So again, generally the slower, the more conscious our breath is, the slower and deeper it is, the better. Let's exhale that heel down, inhale up, and exhale, sink those hips, and inhale both heels sinking down into it. So you can experiment for yourself. Notice how any kind of resistance does not help. It just makes it more difficult, more miserable. So the, the important thing is becoming conscious of how we resist and then letting go of that, softening that resistance. Good, exhale those heels, inhale up, and exhale cartwheel down, bottom of your push-up. Okay, so from here, let's exhale down and we'll take a look at a modified side plank. So we roll on over, stacking the shoulders in the hips and the top leg is straight and we raise the right arm to the sky. This is one variation, one modification for side plank. However, it is not my preferred modification. So this is the only way you can do side plank fine, no problem. But if you can do this instead, do this instead, okay? This is much better. You're working many more of the muscle groups that side plank targets. So again, the point of the posture is not the shape, it's what muscles are engaged, what energetic lines are worked. Good, let's exhale to our down dog. We do the same thing on the other side. So, Again, if you want to come into the second variation that I showed you, you would do it like that, okay? Hopefully you saw that from a down dog. You just bring this foot up and then you roll over. And this allows you to control how much the leg is working to support you, ideally less and less. Good, let's exhale back to our downward dog. And you can vinyasa from there or just go straight back. It's up to you. And then from here, let's inhale to our toes. As we exhale, step, jump, or float to the front edge of our mat. We inhale up to our standing back bend, and we exhale, hands to the heart. Let's again take a look at tree pose, and we'll see if we can take things a step further. To do that, we take the right foot. We place it into the crease of the left leg, like so, okay? So this is a half lotus position in tree. Now I can hold this foot with my left hand or I can reach my right arm around. I am mirroring you by the way now. I know I'm terribly inconsistent with that. Okay, and then we bind the foot. All right, so that's an option. 
and then we can bring this arm up. So everyone should have a free arm and we just raise that arm up to the sky. Good. Exhale. Let's release that side and we'll take a look at the other side. Same thing. The half lotus tree pose. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could do it like this, holding this foot and then this arm comes up. OK, so not everyone will be able to bind and that's fine. We're just doing the best that we can. Good. Exhale, release. Inhale, standing back bend. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, crow, or maybe handstand. And then you exhale to the bottom of your push up, making your way back to downward dog. Okay, in downward dog, let's bring our feet to touch. We inhale the right leg up and back to three legged dog. As we exhale, we touch the knee as high up on the arm as we can. Inhaling that leg up and back, we exhale the knee to the nose or chin or forehead. Inhale, lift the leg, exhale to the opposite arm. Good. Inhale that leg up and back, exhale and lunge. Inhale to a warrior two. Exhale, sink in. Inhale up to stupa and exhale to goddess. Inhale back up. And exhale to warrior two facing the back of the room. And then inhale to reverse or peaceful warrior. Okay, so from our hip right through our wrist, we're trying to stretch. You can actually reach up and grab this wrist if you like. Otherwise, this hand can rest here. Or you can reach around and grab the opposite thigh. Good, let's flow. So we exhale back to warrior two. Inhale up into stupa, exhale to goddess, inhale back up and exhale warrior two, inhale reverse or peaceful warrior, stretch your side, exhale back, inhale up, exhale goddess, so feel those legs as you sink in, find your edge, inhale up, exhale warrior two, inhale reverse warrior, exhale, Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale, cartwheel down, bottom of the push-up. All right, second side, feet touch. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee, left arm. Inhale, exhale, center, inhale, exhale, opposite arm, good, inhale, exhale, lunge, inhale, warrior, exhale, sink into your warrior, and then inhale up into stupa, exhale to goddess, inhale back up, and exhale, Warrior facing back side of the room. Inhale, reverse warrior for a few breaths. So I try and pause each time we have a new posture so we can feel that posture kind of imprinted on our brain so that when we flow, we can go right into it. Good. Let's exhale back to warrior two. Inhale up to stupa. Exhale to goddess. Inhale, back up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, and inhale. Exhale, and inhale. Exhale, inhale. Warrior two, stupa, goddess, stupa, warrior two, Peaceful warrior, and then cartwheel down, bottom of the push-up, making your way back 
to downward dog. Okay, let's take a few breaths in our downward dog. Okay. So from our downward dog, let's come now to the classic side plank, if you can. So if those other side planks were super challenging, then maybe you repeat one of those variations. Otherwise, feet touch, and then you roll toward your left side. So again, you might be tempted to do that. Let's bring those hips down and truly create a plank out of it. Okay. Now again, if this is too much, I just bring that foot here. Again, if I feel wobbly, I take the top foot like that. Okay. Good. Let's exhale back to down dog. We take a breath. I'll turn. And then let's do the other side. So again, from a down dog with my feet touching, I try and roll on over to the other side. Good. Exhale, you can vinyasa back or go straight back to down dog, your choice. All right, from down dog, let's inhale to our toes and we exhale, step, jump, or float to the front edge of our mat. Inhale to the standing back bend and we exhale again, hands to our heart. Let's see if we can take our tree pose a step further. So again, bending the right knee. And again, you might be repeating tree for the third time. That is perfectly fine. Okay, if that, there is a challenge there for you, then that is what you're going to do. Again, the body is not bored. If it's challenging for the body, the body is learning. It's in the process of learning something. So we wanna give it as many repetitions as we can. However, if the body can already do it, then we should challenge the body. Do something that it can't quite do yet, and this might be just the thing. Inhale the arm up, whichever free arm you have, and if you can, fold in half. So coming down, bringing the hand to the ground, maybe you can grab the standing leg so you have just one point of balance. Good. Our next inhale, we come back up and exhale, release the pose. You can see how wobbly I was. And again, that's a good thing. My body is learning something from that. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Okay. It really is problematic when we start to look at our yoga practice like it's a performance. We wear our Lululemons, nothing wrong with wearing Lululemons, but we wear all our fancy clothes and we have on our jewelry and we're trying to look all pretty and perfect. That is not the intention in yoga practice. We should be falling, we should be sweating, we should be uh, wobbling as we do these postures. And then of course, we're working on steadying the breath and steadying the pose over time. Good, we inhale, we come back up and exhale, we release. All right, inhale, standing back bend. Hopefully that feels good after that forward fold. Exhale, forward fold, inhale, half lift, crow or handstand and exhale, bottom of the push up. From our push-up, or from our downward dog, rather, spring our feet to touch. We inhale the right leg up and back. Exhale to the right arm. Inhale. Exhale to the center. Inhale. Exhale to the opposite arm. Kick it out. Drop the back heel. And if you are able, inhale this left arm up into the 12 o'clock position for fallen triangle. 
Let's exhale that hand back down. Inhale the leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. And we inhale up to warrior two. Exhale, sink into it. And then inhale, straighten the front knee. Pivot the hands to face the left wall. And then exhale, reach, 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 reach as far as you can. And then just pivot your arms into, again, a six o'clock position. If you are very far down and you have long arms, you might want to bind this leg like so. You're welcome to do that if that makes sense for your body. Okay, but don't feel that you need to go there. Don't assume that that's better, a better version of the pose. Good. Let's inhale back up, and as we exhale, we cartwheel down, bottom of our push-up. Side two, feet touch, inhale, left leg, exhale, left knee, left arm, inhale, and exhale, center, inhale, and exhale, opposite arm, kick it out, drop the back heel, inhale, lift the arm, good, exhale, sweep it down, inhale, the leg up and back, Exhale, lunge. Inhale, warrior two. And exhale, sink into it. Good. Inhale, straighten that front knee. Pivot the hands. Exhale, reach, reach, reach. Once you can't reach any further, then you pivot your arms. And again, if you have the limbs for it, you can bind this, but then you want to straighten that leg and bring that shoulder back. So it's still a triangle. It's called Bada Trikonasana, which means bound triangle. Okay, so all this other stuff doesn't, shouldn't change really. Good, we inhale back up and we exhale cartwheel down bottom of our push up. <laughs> Okay, so now we start to come to some fun variations of side plank. So we come into first the classic side plank here. And if you want to add a little extra challenge, you take that top foot into a tree pose position. And again, my hips aren't lifting too high, right? I'm trying to keep that plank positioning with my body. Good, let's exhale back to down dog. It starts to get harder because one, we're getting starting to get tired as we repeat the postures. And then also it is just a harder variation, even if just slightly. Okay, feet touch, we can come over to the other side. And then again, for a little more, I bring this foot into this position. Good, exhale, come on down. You can again vinyasa or go straight to the downward dog. All right, so from our downward dog, let's go ahead and inhale to our toes. And as we exhale, we step, jump, or float to the front edge of our mat. Let's inhale up to standing. And we exhale, hands to our heart. So how could we add even more challenge to the tree pose? Well, we could do that by turning it into a toe stand. So we start with the leg in the same position, except this time, there are a couple of ways of doing this. You can bring your arms up. You can also have your arms out in front of you. And as you exhale, you try and just lower down into toe stand. I usually have to bring my hands to the ground. I have done it before where I didn't need to. I just sort of floated down into it. It's fun to do that if you can, by all means try, um, but don't worry about it if you can't. Once you're down, try and have your hands at your heart bouncing on your toes.
All right, on the next inhale, let's come back up. You can see how wobbly I was. And release the pose. Okay, so again, wobbly is nothing to be embarrassed about. I did this earlier today. I was not at all wobbly. I'm just probably more tired at this point. And again, being tired is not a bad thing. As we fatigue our body, um, it gets stronger. So we don't want to, we're not trying to avoid getting tired. Good, we inhale back up as gracefully as you can and exhale, release. Good, inhale, standing back bend and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, crow, handstand, exhale, bottom of the push up. Okay, so we're coming into our uh, home stretch here. Okay, so let's bring our feet to touch. We inhale the right leg up and back. We can bend the knee, open the hip, and if it feels right, you can flip your dog over. And if you do, let's move this arm around just like we move the hip. It doesn't matter if your arm is straight or bent. We just want to move that glenohumeral joint. And then we exhale the hand back to the ground, the foot between the hands, and we inhale up to warrior two. Exhale in. Inhale, straighten the knee, pivot the hands, and exhale, extended triangle. From here, with the leg bound or not, bend the front knee, and with the next exhale, come into half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So we stack the hips and shoulders, just like we did in side plank. The arms are in a six o'clock position, just like triangle pose. For more challenge, you can bend the top knee, Grab the back foot, and you can also take the right hand off of the ground. Okay, so again, you can see I'm immediately losing my balance. Good. Exhale, bottom of the push up, making your way back to downward dog. And we come into side two. So feet touch, inhale, left leg up and back. And then again, bending the knee, opening the hip, and maybe flipping the dog. It's not for everybody. Let's take a nice deep breath there. And as we exhale, bring the hand to the ground, the foot between the hands, and we inhale up into warrior two. Exhale, sink in. Inhale and exhale to extended triangle. Take a deep breath in and with the next exhale, transition, balancing half moon. So make sure this leg is lifted up. It's not limp, it's not bent, the toes aren't pointed. So it's lifting up. We have a right angle here with the legs or as close as we can get, right? For more, I can bend this knee Try and keep those hips stacked. And then again, I can challenge my balance more by lifting this hand. Too much challenge and our body doesn't really learn much of anything. Too little and there's no growth. And we may not even be maintaining what we can do. Good, exhale, bottom of the push up. We make our way back to downward dog. We now come to our last of our side plank variations. So feet touch and we roll over into the classic side plank. Again, you could be doing any variation at this point. You can do the tree variation or if you want to take it up a notch, you lift this leg for what's called a starfish. Exhale, come through down dog, take a breath there. 
I'll turn. And then the feet touch, and we roll over onto the right side, first coming into a classic side plank. And then again, I can add more challenge by lifting this leg. Some people can grab the toes and do all kinds of fancy stuff. So if you got it, go for it. Let's come back to our down dog. Again, you can vinyasa or go straight back there. And from our down dog, we'll inhale to our toes. And we're going to exhale, step, jump, or float to the front edge of our mat. Inhale up to standing. And exhale, hands to the heart. Okay. This is our last variation from tree. And again, you might be repeating any of the variations we did. That was slightly challenging. And challenging isn't just physically. If your breath got all funky, if you felt stressed out, if you couldn't relax into it, then it's, it's, there's work to be done there. Okay, if you're going with me to this next pose, we bring the leg into that same position and then we come down, just like we did with toe stand, but this time I rest my shins on the back of my arms and I lift up into a crow pose. So I'll show you from the side what that looks like. Now you don't straighten the leg, okay? There's another pose where you do straighten the leg. That is not this pose, all right? So this pose, is called Ekapada Arda Bada Padma Bakasana. It's a mouthful. The other pose is called Galavasana. So this is not Galavasana. Okay, let's inhale back up. And we exhale, hands to the heart. And we try the other side. Okay, so again, I can just see how far I can go. Maybe this is it. And maybe I stay here. Maybe I can come down like this. And maybe that's it. Maybe I can rest my shins on the back of the arms. And then maybe, just maybe, I can lift that back leg up and take a few breaths. All right? So again, what's important is it's just your personal best. I'm pretty tired, so I'm going to come out of it. I'm feeling lightheaded as well. So I really am at my personal edge today doing the, as much as I can do. Okay, from here, let's go ahead and inhale those arms up, and we exhale into a forward fold. Inhale to half lift, and let's exhale to a seat. Okay, so our legs are straight, spine is straight, we'll inhale the arms up, and we exhale into a forward fold, and let's extend the exhale twice the length of the inhale. Good, arms with the ears, inhale, come on up. And as you exhale, bring the hands behind you, fingers pointing towards your buttocks. Let's point the toes as we inhale, lift the hips up. And if you can, let your chin drop back. As you exhale, bring those hips back down. So that's called Purvottanasana. Inhale the arms up. And as we exhale, we roll back nice and easy onto our back. Once we get there, let's bring those legs in for Apanasana. Make a few circles, massaging the back against the ground. Do a few in one direction, a few in the opposite direction. Good, and then let's just extend our arms to the sides. 
And we'll drop both knees to the left as we look to the right. And let's just let the breath be natural now. So we're no longer making a sound, no longer trying to breathe deep or slow. Good, we inhale knees back through center. We'll exhale them off to the other side. Look away from the knees. Good. Let's inhale the knees back to center, and we'll grab the soles of our feet. Do a little happy baby here. So rocking side to side. Extending the legs one at a time or both together. Pulling the legs apart or overhead. And then when you're ready, relax. Go ahead and unwind into Shavasana. You've probably heard it said before, maybe by me, how important Shavasana is. You might have even heard it's the most important part of yoga practice. And I don't disagree with that statement. So leaving Shavasana early, you know, it's not the end of the world, but you really are kind of missing out. So if you can avoid that, by all means do so. Um, I recommend setting a timer for six minutes. That's kind of the minimum that you want to do. But feel free to relax for longer than that, should you want to. So maybe a timer isn't the best thing. Maybe you set a um, stopwatch. And then you, you know, when you feel like you're ready to come up, you just check and make sure that you aren't cutting it short of six minutes. And then you want to stay there and relax for a few minutes. As you get into your relaxation, I do want to make a couple of announcements. One is um, I'm hoping to do some hikes and outdoor yoga uh, in the coming weeks. So maybe on Sunday, maybe this Sunday, we'll see how the weather holds up. If you're interested in hiking with me and then maybe we'll do some yoga. It just sort of depends on how people feel. Um, check out my Patreon page. I'll be making an announcement there, hopefully. Or you can contact me on Facebook. Um, and just say, hey, I'm interested in the hike or whatever. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's class. Let me know if there are any questions or if I can help you in any way. Otherwise, I hope to see you in yin yoga in 15 minutes or in vinyasa yoga next week. Thanks again, everyone, and namaste.